so let's talk a little bit about your controls for operation and everything that's going on inside of the cab right now. Working our way from the back of the control panel to the front, you'll notice right away we've got a master battery switch on and off. So uh, when you go to park the machine at night, you can turn that off. Uh, that way there's no residual drain on any of the batteries. Go ahead and turn it on when you're ready to sweep the uh, next day. Underneath the little rubber cap here are two USB ports where you can plug in anything that you might need to charge uh, during your shift, cell phones, etc. Uh, then you have your heat and AC controls. So you have a heat on and off switch, you have an air conditioning on and off switch. The switch above that allows us to control airflow, either pulling fresh air in from the uh, outside into the cabin or going ahead and recirculating the air that's inside of the cabin. And then the last switch at the top is for fan speed, off, slow, medium, or high, giving you the control to set that climate uh, and temperature inside your cab however you'd like. Moving forward, we have our water pump switch that will turn our water pumps on or off. It's a three position switch. In the middle is the neutral or off position. Low engages just one of the, the twin diaphragm electric pumps that are at the rear of the machine. High engages both pumps and allows you to put out more water. And then you have your water gauge uh, above that that indicates how much water is left in your water tanks. And when your water uh, level gets too low, you have a water indicator light that comes on and that tells you that your water level is too low and your pumps are being shut off. Moving forward, we talked about the load wheel that's in the hopper and how periodically that, that may get jammed. This is the load wheel reverse switch. That'll only happen if you know that you have a jam that's in that load wheel. You can go ahead and it's an intermittent switch. You would hold that down for a few seconds, allow that wheel to spin in reverse and hopefully discharge any material that you have. Just in front of that is a high and a low axle switch. When you're doing typical sweeping or traveling on highway, you're going to have it in high uh, axle range. If you have to climb hills, uh, have steep inclines, especially under load, uh, you can go ahead and switch it into low axle, and that gives you a little more torque and the ability to climb those steep hills. It's imperative that you remember to have the machine in park when you go to switch between low or high axle. Moving forward, we have a switch that controls uh, whether you are sweeping or traveling. So obviously when you are moving the machine from location to location, you want to have the machine in travel mode. And when you come to the area where you're ready to sweep, you're going to go ahead, you're going to slow the machine down, uh, stop, and put it into sweep mode. What this does is it allows you to separate your RPMs for traveling down the road to your RPMs for all of your sweep functions. When you put the machine in sweep mode, the switch next to it is going to control your engine RPMs. Your ground speed will still be controlled off of your gas foot pedal uh, in the cab, but the RPM switch will allow you to govern your, uh, your RPMs for your sweep functions at that point. Moving forward, we've got hopper raise and lower, and then hopper dump and retract. So when you go to dump your material, you can raise your hopper up to the position you want it in, clearing any sideboards on any uh, dump vehicles that you might be dumping into or containers, and then go ahead and dump the material out of the hopper. Retract it and hold it down to lower the machine back into a, a sweeping position. Continuing forward here, you'll notice we've got our main sweeper control panel. If you look at it closely, you'll notice there's basically two uh, white boxes that are outlined here. You'll see the box closest uh, to, to the left-hand side is your left gutter broom controls. This, this is the area where you're going to set your gutter broom down pressure. Uh, and uh, have the ability to engage and, and disengage the gutter broom motors on that.